In this video, we're going to take a look at the new features that have been added to the Stream Deck in version 5.3 of the software that was just released. So whether you are using the Stream Deck for live streaming or productivity in general, you're really going to love these new features. So let's jump in and take a look. First off, though, we do actually need to get the update, don't we? So how do we do that? Well, if you come over to your uh, app, your Stream Deck app, and then click on the little cogwheel just up at the top here. Uh, and then from the uh, preferences screen, uh, what you need to do is just click on that check for updates button if you are not on 5.3.anything. So any, any previous versions, just click on the check for updates uh, and you'll see that there is an update available. Go through the update process and update the Stream Deck. But we're still not quite ready to go because what you need to do then after you have done the update is go back into that same panel again. And what you'll notice is there is now also a uh, update firmware um, uh, a firmware update I should say available so just go in and click that one and that will update the uh, firmware on your device uh, so let's have a look then at these new features shall we now that we're all up to date so I'm going to start with some that are actually pretty irrelevant to me, and that is in OBS Studio Integration 2.0, as they're calling it. So they've basically redone the uh, OBS plugin for Stream Deck, and they've added in 10 new actions. Uh, and those are, cunningly, I've got them here to pop up on the screen for you. Uh, so first is the ability to pause and resume an active recording, uh, turn on or off a replay buffer. Uh, the uh, next one is save the active replay buffer. By the way, these are irrelevant to me because I use Ecamm Live. Uh, one uh, feature request for Ecamm Live has been those replays. So <laughs> maybe I should note these down as a replay, as a uh, feature request for Ecamm. Uh, the next is uh, switch scene collections. Uh, next is play, pause, restart, and so on for the, uh, the media controls for a media source that you've got in OBS. Uh, studio mode, toggle this on and off. Uh, review to program. So send the sort of preview scene to the program window, I guess a bit like we've got preview mode in Ecamm Live. Uh, and then filter, turn on or off a filter that you've got applied to a particular uh, source or whatever it happens to be. Uh, take a screenshot of the current preview and finally switch transition and set a duration. So that is what those uh, those updates are for specifically for the uh, the OBS plugin. Now, I should just say, if you are using OBS and you're on a Mac, then uh, I wonder, have you heard about Ecamm Live? I've just mentioned it enough times. Ecamm Live is basically li live production software built purely for the Mac, and it is very Mac-like in its implementation. Uh, I did go down the OBS route, by the way, when I uh, first started out looking to create this type of video. I pulled out all of the hair on my head <laughs> and then finally found Ecamm, and everything has been absolute bliss ever since. Hair still hasn't grown back, but uh, I'm a lot happier now that I've found Ecamm. You can get a free trial of it. As I say, if you are familiar with OBS, it does uh, uh, most of the things that OBS can do and a lot of things that OBS can't do as well. You can get a free trial at takeonetech.io slash Ecamm. And if you really like it, then I've even got a whole masterclass all about it that you can find in the description as well. But with that said, let's uh, get back to some of these features, shall we? So back to the updates and the next new feature is device rotation. So this is something that you'll find in the settings. If I come back over here, clicking on the uh, cogwheel, uh, then we've got this new uh, little option just here. Uh, this is in the general device settings, so where you can set brightness, screensaver, all that kind of stuff. We've now got this extra field here, which is device rotation. And what that's going to do, or sorry, device orientation, what that's going to do is just rotate the button. So if you think about the way that you use Stream Deck, I've got mine here, and I've got it uh, in this orientation, logo at the top with the uh, text the right way around. But maybe Maybe you want to have this sort of like tilt turned sideways off to the side of your computer, off to the side of your keyboard or something like that. Uh, there's any number of reasons why you might want to have this in different or orientations, cable routing and things like that. Well, now you can do that. And if I just come back over to here uh, momentarily, I can come to this device orientation and basically you can choose standard 90 degrees, 180 or 270. So if I come back over to my device, uh, if I change the device orientation 90 degrees, what you'll see is all of these icons uh, will rotate by 90 degrees. They stay in exactly the same places on the device, uh, or exactly the same place on the device, but they've just literally rotated the icons. If I want to turn them up, di upside down, maybe this is a good one to look at, the uh, house for my home icon. Uh, there, it's upside down now. Turn it 270 degrees, uh, and then finally... Uh, back to normal. So it's just rotating the way that the uh, the icons appear 
on the uh, on the keys. Now, if I come back over to the Stream Deck uh, app itself, uh, you'll see that uh, there's nothing that actually happens in the app. So if I come over here and I change this to uh, 90 degrees, uh, it hasn't actually changed anything on the device on the uh, uh, in the app, I should say itself. It's only changing it on the device. So uh, that is uh, quite a nice uh, little feature there. Uh, the next one is the ability to uh, resize the property inspector uh, area on the app. And what is the property inspector area, you may well ask. Well, it's this whole area down here, down at the bottom of the device, uh, where you add in an action and you've got this uh, area here that you can edit the settings. So if I was to come down and find something, there's one down here that I happen to know is uh, has quite a lot of information in it, the custom shortcut for the Zoom plugin. Uh, and what you'll see is in a moment, there you go. It's now got this uh, information and settings related to that particular action. But what you can see is we've got this uh, little scroll bar here. So that just sort of be able to move uh, move down to see the rest of the, de the details and the information in there. Uh, previously, the size of this window down here was always fixed. And as we resize the window of the, uh, the app, um, it was always this area up in the top that would be the one that got uh, bigger or smaller. Uh, well, now what we can do is if I just make this window a bit bigger, um, what I can do is I can just grab this uh, center bar. I, I mean, it's something that I went to try immediately when I first started using the Stream Deck because you just feel like it should be able to do it. Uh, well, now it can. So now you can see how I've resized that window. Uh, it's all fitting on our screen here nicely. Uh, and you can see that now we can see all of the information for that plugin. So uh, just a little thing in terms of functionality, but it does actually make it a lot more usable because you don't have to worry about these uh, these scroll bars and things like that. So a uh, nice little extra little bit of functionality that's been added in there. So moving down the list, the next up is uh, integration uh, and support for the Corsair Voyager laptop. Uh, why have they got integration for a uh, of a laptop by a company called Corsair. Well, in case you weren't aware, uh, Corsair actually own Elgato. Um, Corsair make a whole range of uh, PC streaming and gaming gear. They make uh, make PCs. They also make components and various different things like that. And they actually own a number of different companies of which Elgato is one. And the Cor Corsair Voyager, in fact, I can even show you, <laughs> the Corsair Voyager A1600 uh, features a built-in macro bar right at the top. You can just sort of see it over there. In fact, if I scroll down here, uh, this is it. So uh, where you can see between the uh, the sort of base and the screen, you've got this line of keys here. Well, these are basically all programmable keys, uh, just like you would have on a Stream Deck, he says, knocking his Stream Deck over. <laughs> and uh, with those, basically, you can, um, uh, you can program those now in the Stream Deck app. So what you would do is if you if you are owning one of these laptops, you would just come into your Stream Deck app and you would see that uh, the uh, Voyager would appear as the device name. So just as you can select the device in uh, the Stream Deck app. So if I come over here, uh, you can see here we've got the different devices. So Stream Deck Mobile, Stream Deck Pedal, Stream Deck XL. So Voyager would just appear in there as one of those devices. Uh, and then you could just use the same familiar interface drag and drop to add your actions to your Corsair Voyager laptop. <laughs> so uh, again, I'm sure that's going to be uh, really welcome for people who use those devices. Uh, not one that I'm going to use, but uh, nevertheless, nice little addition. Uh, the next new feature, though, is custom multi-action delay. Not to be confused with multi-action delay actions. Uh, let me explain, <laughs> perhaps. If I come over here and I delete this uh, this action that I've just created, uh, if we want to create a multi-action, this, this enables you to basically string together a series of different actions in uh, if, you know, anything that you've got from the plugins, you can just chain them all together. Uh, there's two ways you can do this. You can either come into the Stream Deck uh, and you can select multi-action and you can drag it across just like that. Um, but actually there is a shortcut for multi-actions which is just right click uh, and create multi-action there. Once you've created the multi-action, then you just click on this little arrow here to go into edit it. And now we basically just drag on any actions that we want to go there. So why might you want to do that? Lots of reasons. You might have it opening an app and then opening a series of documents uh, or you know, various other different things. Lots of use cases for this. Uh, one that you might do is something like a Stinger transition in Ecamm Live, for example. So just to use that as an example, I do have a little Stinger transition, which is something like this. Uh, and the way that you'd use those is have that pop up. Uh, and then whilst it is covering the screen, uh, sneakily switch over to a different scene to give you some sort of effect like this so that when you come back I'm back in this scene. 
so that is what it's used for. The way that you'd program that into a button so that it does those two things at once, the stinger triggering and then the transition to the next scene uh, is, and this is, by the way, not the new feature. This is a, a, the, the way to use the built-in delay. Uh, so what we would do is I'd come into Ecamm Live. Uh, first of all, I'm going to play an animation, which is my stinger animation. Uh, so from here, I'm going to select it. It's just thinking for a moment. Uh, there we go. It's actually taken that as a default, the first one up there. Uh, and then if I go to run scene, and then I select the scene that I want as this uh, main scene from all of my scenes. Uh, and now if I was to trigger this transition, what might happen is there might, because there's absolutely no delay in them, uh, it's sort of uh, the timing of it might all be slightly off. Although I, that actually, I have to say, did work kind of well. Uh, but let me just go back here for a second. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what the uh, sort of traditional uh, delay that you might have uh, added in would be. Uh, so in the Stream Deck plugin, you've got this delay action. This only appears, by the way, when you are in multi-action. So you won't even see this as an option if you are just uh, creating a regular action. Uh, but if I just drag this across here, we might want to add in a bit of a delay. And the way that you specify delay in here is uh, in terms of milliseconds. If I wanted half a second delay, I would just type uh, 500 in there. Uh, and then, uh, as I say, it was working pretty well before, wasn't it? But that now, after 500 milliseconds, is switching the scene uh, after starting that animation. So that's kind of how the delay works in there. But the thing is, there is actually a sort of baked in delay in Stream Deck. And from uh, all of the previous versions from 5.2 uh, backwards, um, there was always a 200 millisecond delay uh, between any actions. So if you didn't actually want any delay in here and you just got a series of things that you wanted to trigger pretty much all at once, um, it was impossible to do that because you'd got this 200 millisecond delay sort of baked into it. So even without the delay there, um, there was always going to be 200 milliseconds between this one and this one, which is actually why this, this kind of just happened to work that way. Um, but let's say you were doing something where you didn't want any delay, uh, that could sometimes cause a few issues. So what they've done now is they've actually added in the uh, the ability to adjust the kind of the built-in delay, if that makes sense. Uh, and the way that you do that is just down here. You've now got this extra little uh, uh, icon, this one here, the customized delays, and it allows you to select two different delays here. Uh, the first one is what they call the virtual key press. Uh, that is, if you imagine, you know, pressing a button, you've got a whole series of uh, of uh, actions in here but each one imagine that you're just kind of virtually pressing a button to activate them um, well the virtual key press is the time from when the trigger is sent to the imaginary button popping back up bit of a weird metaphor I know but uh, that you can now change the time uh, from basically 100 milliseconds uh, down to one millisecond so that is kind of like the time of like pressing the button and it triggering the action one thing to bear in mind with this is um, in some of these cases you could run into issues where basically you're trying to do it too quick. Certainly when you're sort of chaining things together, you might have things where apps need a certain amount of time to react to them. So actually, you know, it's not a case of, well, let's just set all of these to the lowest possible number and then everything will just happen quicker. Um, there may be a bit of fine tuning that needs to go on here. Some things it may actually kind of stop the chain of events from happening. So uh, there's not going to be sort of a one size fits all for this. Um, the next one here that we've got is um, the time between actions. So this again can be between one millisecond and 100 milliseconds. The default for these is basically exactly as it was in version 5.2 and previously. So this is set to the virtual button press or virtual key press is 100 milliseconds and the time between actions is 100 milliseconds given as that 200 milliseconds that there was always uh, before. Uh, 200 milliseconds being 0.2 of a sec second <laughs> if that puts it into a bit more context for you. Um, but what we can do is we can now actually take this both of these down to get a theoretical minimum time between actions of uh, two milliseconds, one for the virtual key press and one for the time between actions. So uh, again, not necessarily relevant to this particular uh, use case here that I'd got, um, but with anything else where you're kind of stringing actions together, uh, something to play with. Uh, this is not gonna replace that that delay because obviously the maximum that we can get up to is, a, is 200 milliseconds. Whereas with the delay, you can see that uh, the default for that, if I just drag it in, 
the default here that it puts in is 1000 milliseconds being you know a second uh, but we could equally do you know here if i'm doing my outro on youtube then uh, i would set that to 20000 milliseconds which gives me that 20 second countdown uh, to the end uh, with my end scene and various different things like that so that is uh, these delays if that is uh, a little bit tricky to get your head around <laughs> then um, if you haven't run into any issues with this before and timings of things and you haven't noticed that there's any you know or this is taking too long or something like that it's almost something that you don't need to worry about but if there are some things where you you wish things could actually trigger closer together and they just can't because of this 200 milliseconds this is where this is going to uh, going to help you so <laughs> i hope that kind of explains it uh, maybe a little bit confusing having three different delays but uh, i hope not now, if you are relatively new to the Stream Deck and uh, maybe you're not using multi-action features or indeed many of the other great features of Stream Deck, um, then it may be that uh, you might want to check out my uh, beginner's guide to Stream Deck. And that is coming up right now, as is my playlist for Stream Deck in general. So maybe check out those videos and I'll see you in there. <laughs>